This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these mesh gradient backgrounds using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Masterclass, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So we'll go ahead and get started here with Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just make sure we're working with a similar uh, workflow here on the screen. Just go to View, make sure you have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then I'll open up the Edit, um, the edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, Arrowheads, and Strokes uh, menu with that button right there. And what we're going to do now is create a rectangle. So we're going to grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle like that. And we want to make this the same size that would, uh, whatever you'd like your background to be. So like if you're designing like a wallpaper or something and your screen resolution is 1920 by 1080, we're going to make it that size. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use something basic like 1200 by, eight, uh, 1200 by 800. So I'm going to grab the select tool. Uh, up here where you see W and H, that's width and height. I'm going to triple click this number up here, whatever that number is. I'm going to change the width to 1200. And then for the height, I'm going to change that to 800. And let me just move that to the center of the screen here so we can see that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, uh, we're going to start coloring this thing in. So uh, for this, for the, the example of this tutorial, I'm going to start with the shade of um, like this pinkish magenta sort of shade down here. And now we're going to grab the, uh, the, the, uh, the mesh tool down here where it says create and edit meshes if you hover your icon it's the third icon up from the bottom click on that and just make sure your presets up here match mine we want this one selected uh, mesh rather than uh, conical gradient we want that, that enabled uh, most importantly right here rows and columns we want both of that both of them set to two and then everything else as you see up here and once once you have those presets as they are as the, as as I have them we're going to come over here to the fill and stroke menu and over here where it says mesh gradient, I'm going to click on that and it's going to create a mesh gradient out of uh, our rectangle here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this center node right here and I'm going to make this um, like a shade of like an orangish yellow like that. And I'll come down here, I'll make, I'll take that node right there, I'll make that like a, like a deep lavender like that. I'll come over here, I'll make this, um, I'll make this maybe orange like that. I'll take this stop right here. I'll make this, uh, I'll use the another shade of orange like that, like I used up here. And then I'll come up here and I'll do something similar with the, uh, the purple. I'll make this uh, maybe something like that. And what we could do now is, I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel. And what we could do now is we can take this center node right here and move it like that. And then we could take this stop and move this like that and take this stop and move that around. And the idea here is that we're just moving around these stops to get like this random, you know, uh, whimsical swirling colors sort of look. I'm going to take this stop and move that up here. I'll move this one down here like that. I'll move this one over here. You got to be careful how far you move them. If you move it too far, you end up with color banding like you see here. You get like a hard line where it's no longer a gradient. You don't want to go too far with that. So I'll put that right about there. We'll do something similar down here. Move this around some more. And you could actually take these and move them outward like that. You could take these edges and move them out. I'll move this one out. Let me move that one out. I want to add some more of that purple in there. And then I'll come adjust this uh, this side over here. You don't want to go if you, if you move these nodes in the edges. You don't want to come inward like that because then it's going to start erasing from the uh, the rectangle there, which we don't want to happen. Let me move this in like this. Okay, so as you can see, I just played around with this a little bit and I adjusted it until I, I reached a place where I think it looks good. And once you've reached that place, you can just click on the select tool up here to, to uh, get out of the uh, mesh gradient 
setting. And you can see we have our mesh gradient background right there. Now if you want, you could finish the tutorial right here and use this as your background. Otherwise, if you'd like to take this further and make it more like I did in the thumbnail where we have that triangle pattern going over it, what we'll do now is grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas like that just to create a perfectly symmetrical square. And then I want to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then I want to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you could press B on the keyboard. Uh, what I want to do now is up here in the top left corner where it says Enable Snapping, we want to turn that on and make sure you have this one enabled right here that says Snap Cusp Nodes Including Rectangle Corners. You'll notice as you hover your cursor over each of these, a little tag will appear with its label on it. Snap Cusp Nodes, that's the one we want labeled. That's the one we want enabled. Uh, I'm going to snap the cursor to the bottom left corner over here and click to create a point. And then I'll snap to the top right corner, click to create another point, then over here, and back to the starting point like that. And what I'll do now is I'll grab the select tool, click and drag over both of those objects, and go to path, division. And it's going to divide them up into two individual pieces like that, which is what we're going for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of the graphic to deselect everything and take just this piece right here and I'm going to make this uh, a shade that's radically different than any of the colors we use in here. So I'm going to make this green because there's no green in there whatsoever, nothing even close. And I'll come down here and I'll make this one a different color, maybe blue like that. And what I'll do now is click and drag over both of those. Uh, come up here to where we have the width and the height. Let's, uh, let's uh, enable the lock right there so it locks the proportions as we scale it. I'm going to remove this. I'm just going to make this sized at 100 pixels. So I'll hit 100 and enter. And since we have the lock icon enabled, it'll change the height accordingly. And then I'm just going to take this and put this in the corner right here until it snaps in. And then I want to duplicate that by hitting Control D and snap that in there like that as well. Take this right here, click and drag over all four of those. Control D, snap it in here and just keep doing that over and over again until you get to the uh, the end of the uh, the end of the line here horizontally. Same thing down here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to hit control D and I'm going to put this one down here, but I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to click this button right here that says flip selected objects horizontally so that it's going in a different way. It's kind of like an alternating pattern. Now let me select all of these, both rows of these, hit control D to duplicate, put them down here. Control D again, put this right here, Control D, snap that right there, and there you go. Now you can click off it to deselect everything. So what we're going to do now is click on just this green triangle right here, and then click the red X down here in the lower left corner to remove the fill color. And now we're going to grab the dropper tool, which is over here, but for this we're going to use the keyboard shortcut because it's much quicker. I'm going to press D on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click and I'm just going to click and drag a little portion of that area that that triangle was covering, and it's going to fill it in with that shade of orange that we used previously. You'll notice that it's filled in when you see that orange stripe down here. Now we can switch back to the select tool by pressing D again. Select just this blue shape right here. Click the red X to to uh, get rid of that fill color. Press D on the keyboard again to get the dropper tool, and again fill that in. And I'm just going to go through and repeat that process over and over again, just using the select tool and the dropper tool by toggling. I'll be toggling between those, tool, those tools with the, uh, the letter D on the keyboard and just removing the fill color and filling it in like that. And this could be a little tedious, so uh, uh, it may take a little while to go through this. I'm going to go through this real quick and then uh, I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, I've went through and, and changed all of the colors of the individual triangles. And as you can see now, we have our mesh gradient with uh, this triangle pattern uh, comprising it. So um, again, this, this right here could be the end of the tutorial for you. You could end it right here, and that right there is pretty good enough to use. But one last final step that I like to do, just to put a little bit of a personal touch on this, is I like to click on one of these random individual uh, shapes right here. And under the Fill tab, where it says HSL, click on that where it says L, I'll take this L row and slide this to the left a little bit just to make that a little darker so it stands out more. And I go through, I'll go through and do that with uh, with all of these as well just to make it, just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of character to make it stand out a little more. 
I just randomly take some of these. Some of them I'll make them darker. Some of them I'll make it lighter like that. I'll do the same thing over here. Make this one lighter. Make this one darker. And I think you should pretty much get the idea here. So I'm just going to go through and adjust these real quick just to give it a little bit of a personal touch. And I'll catch up with you when I'm done. All right, so I think I'll call it a day right there. As you can see, I've went through and I've adjusted the colors of all those individual triangles. And I think I should, that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating this mesh gradient background using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.